Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the Magic Mushroom Speaks podcast. I'm your host, Traveling Psycho, not the one and only. I'm going to do a quick single show today all by myself. I just want to speak a little bit about psilocybin magic mushrooms and what's going on in Canada right now. So I've been reading some news articles, and according to the City TV News, Canada has violated hundreds of patients awaiting psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy. And they're doing this because they want the health workers to try to take some psilocybin to understand a more effective way of training and I, what their patients are going through. Now, my thoughts on this are, I, I totally agree. They should absolutely have to at least try a small dose to see how it affects the mind and what their patients will be going through when um, they are giving them that, that therapy. It's not a regular medication where you just dispense it and... I think they should have to experience what their patient will go through. In 2020, Health Canada started granting exemptions under the Control Drug Act to give psilocybin to patients suffering from uh, life and psychological distress. So I mean, if they're understanding what it is going to do for that person, why can't they give it to a person who has a full life to live? There's something else going on behind the scenes, and I think I've seen something about it, how it's illegal because it opens doors to information. The government doesn't want us to, you know, know or see. Now, I'm someone who has done over 40 or 50 trips of high-dose psilocybin. I can definitely attest to saying that it has opened doors to things that have helped me mentally, emotionally, but also shown me things that I don't think people are supposed to see. No, that's not correct. Let me restate that. Things we're supposed to see, but the government doesn't want us to. As far as spirituality and even just the fundamentals of human life. You know, like I've seen evolution. Now, in this article, it's stating that only 80 Canadians have taken psychedelics to treat their pain with the government's permission. How can you run tests and see benefits of psilocybin when you're only granting 80 Canadians to have psychedelic treatment for their pain so i'm thinking there's only 80 people who who have done the studies on i mean i'm sure there's more but that's not this article and that's not what it's about there's only 80 that's not enough they need to get out there they need to actually get to the grind and get to the bottom of this and if there isn't enough professionals in the country to provide the treatment they need to get uh they need to get out there they need to start promoting they need to start getting the word out there and let's get this medicine on the roll, you know, let's let's get this movement started. Let's get people treatment that psilocybin can provide. Now, in this art- article, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but come on. In this article, they're saying there are untrained people offering psilocybin therapy and people are suffering harm. I, re- I really have to think about this and uh, I'm going to say this because it could go both ways. Where the fuck are they getting the statistics of this saying that people are offering it in a therapeutic way and people are suffering harm? To me, this is confusing. I mean, it could be people just doing psilocybin and they're taking it saying that people are offering it as a therapeutic way. To me, this is part of the article that just seems to be people taking psilocybin and then going to the hospital or getting arrested or or just anything and saying that, you know, they were being... that. They got harm from taking magic mushrooms. I don't think there's anybody out there saying unregistered or or telling or offering psilocybin therapy and harming people. That just makes absolutely no sense to me. So for this part of the article, it's just outright ridiculous and it's full of fucking shit. Another part of the article is another crock of shit. It does happen. In worst case scenarios, people have jumped from buildings and, and really done harm to themselves, you know, with without the trip sitter after have taken psilocybin. But, you know, there's a, a responsibility. People who are taking psilocybin, there's no doubt about it. And that's what's putting the bad stigma on the movement. People are not taking it seriously, using it as a party drug and not doing the research, doing too much. And, and just getting out of control, not being responsible. And not really realizing uh, that they should be buying a scale. 
and not knowing what high amounts of psilocybin will do or maybe they've never tripped i don't know but you need a trip sitter while you're doing the high doses that's it that's all the reason i believe this is happening is because there's not enough awareness we need to get the awareness out and let people people know about it let people um be educated on the situation and understand the risks of taking psilocybin and not to abuse it and if doctors feel like they're putting an awful lot on the line in terms of uh their reputation and credibility then you know what fuck them their job is to look out for their patient and the human being and all the all they're thinking about is themselves and how much money they're gonna make and and it, you know that's just a fucking crock of shit so anyways that's 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 a whole other topic that um you know i could uh i could get in on but they need to start thinking about their patients and think about the impact that this could have on the community for mental health the reason health canada doesn't recognize psilocybin as a treatment for anything is because they're not doing enough studies they're not getting out there they're not testing and that's why people are going to go to the dispensaries and and you know try to get their medicine try to try to try to better their life because it's helping them and they're just not um getting any help from the government you know it's it's ridiculous there was a, a 54 year old uh saskatchewan man he was taking psilocybin therapy under the exemption of the Canada drug laws and he was terminally ill with cancer he waited 511 days and they canceled him and he couldn't continue his therapy and they denied him he's terminally ill with cancer and they took away his medicine who the fuck is the government to tell anybody that they can or cannot eat a natural medicine you know what fuck them like, the man's dying of stage 4 cancer. He found that psilocybin was the most effective, yet the government will take it away. And to me, that's just rid ridiculous. I have no words. No words for this. This is just absolutely... <laughs> that's cruel. Cruelty to humans, you know? Uh, and... I don't know. Now, I mentioned in another uh, podcast... It is, it's cured me from addiction. It's a cured me uh, from alcoholism. I'm living proof that it does work. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of other people out there who have, have the same story as me. Who have taken psilocybin and be cured from, from some kind of uh, illness. Whether it's addiction, mental health problems. So the government needs to start listening to the people and just put the work in and put the time in and the money and figure this shit out and the reason we start we're starting to see all these dispensaries pop up is because the people know the benefits of psilocybin and i think we um we're gonna see more dispensaries popping up for sure 100 percent. there's gonna be more dispensaries and people are gonna go get their medicine whether the government likes it or not so that's just something you know we're gonna have to deal with as the people because they're gonna try to come down on us arrest us but you know what all the power to the people and uh let's get the this movement started you know we need to stick together and uh keep pushing like the the marijuana did will it follow the same path will it work well that's yet to be seen but i think us as the people we need to stand up and fight for for what we think is right if we all band together they, they they can't they can't win and it seems like uh everywhere i'm reading on the internet it's all about assisted dying and they're not really thinking about mental health aspect of people who still have their lives to live as well but i mean i'm happy for the people who are going on assisted dying and would like to you know use psilocybin as a tool to help them you know that's that's a magical a magical thing so but i guess that's all i have for today you know, I just wanted to do a little article on this and 
share a little bit about my feelings. You know, we have to go one step at a time and one level at a time. But I think we need to start the process now. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you on the next edition in the fifth dimension. Stay tripping. Much love.